Saturday last week, I was in Ohio State. Um, first time ever, a uh, spring game in college football was broadcast on broadcast television. Um, and we aired Ohio State spring game. Um, it was really, I got to tell you, I had a blast. It was really fun. 80,000 people there. There's a lot of buzz about this team, obviously. Can't wait to go to Ann Arbor next week. A little bit more on that in, in a second. But I wanted to just, especially for Buckeye fans and just college football fans, because this team is going to be really good. I'd be very shocked if this team is not one or two in the preseason poll. And, you know, like some takeaways after being around the program for the last couple of days Number one is is there is some serious buzz, and I know like Brian Hartline is not going to be happy with me for saying this, but like there's some serious buzz about Jeremiah Smith. He was the number one overall recruit uh, out of high school in last year's class, and man, being like being around him, seeing him in person, watching him play, he's the real deal. He's he's going to be one of the better players in college football, not just better freshmen, but one of the better players in college football. I, I genuinely believe that he he is one of the most rare talents I've seen at that age in a long time, in a long time. And that's as far as I want to go because, again, like, I I don't want to put too much pressure on this young man. Like, let's let, let, let this – he's just – he's a kid, basically. Let's let him mature, learn, grow into the football player that he will be, and I do believe – he will be a phenomenal football player. Uh, so far this spring, Julian Sain, who transferred in from Alabama, he has impressed uh, at the quarterback position. I didn't think he played all that great on Saturday, but it was a windy day, and that's a really good defense. So, you know, those two things you kind of take with a grain of salt. The quarterback room in general is interesting, and I'll hit, hit on that in a little bit because there's a lot of guys in there kind of going through this battle. And then the other buzz is just, Chip Kelly being your play caller, like this guy is as good of a football coach from the head coaching perspective as we've seen in a long time. And what was fascinating to me about being around Chip is that is this renewed sense of joy that he has about being back around ball and not having to be the CEO where he gets to actually coach football, which is what these guys want to do in the first place. This is what they fell in love with was coaching ball, helping guys become better than 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 they think they can be and 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 growing and developing these young men into not only you know great men but also great football players and he he has that joy back and I do think it's going to be interesting to see them run his offense in terms of the run game um all right the biggest takeaway on the field that I had is that that defense likely going to be as good as any defense in the country, I would be pretty surprised if they're not the best defense in the country. Um, they brought almost everybody back, and then they add Caleb Downs. Um, it's like, wow, okay. They made some adjustment at linebacker where they needed to, to fill some holes. Remember, Tommy Eike, Eichenberg was, is leaving to the NFL. They're going to be fantastic on uh, the back end and the secondary. Lathan Ransom didn't even play Saturday, and they've got great corners. They've got Caleb Downs. They've got Ransom, and there was really nowhere to throw the football on that secondary. And even the depth that they had with some of their younger guys was pretty incredible. So again, I, I think that Ohio State has the potential to be the best defense in the country. Now the quarterback battle. You've got Will Howard and Devin Brown that are legitimately, I would say right now, competing for for that 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 starter spot. Will Howard got the first snaps. He was 9 of 13 for 77 yards. Devin Brown was 5 of 7 for 66 yards. Did have a have a touchdown. Uh did not throw an interception. Ran it three times although them not being live it's it's hard to really get a, a feel for what's going on. They are going to be driving a car that nobody else in college football is driving. Whoever takes the snaps. Now, whether it's Will Haw Howard or or Devin Brown they're going to have, I would expect, a run game that features the two best running backs in college football, Travion Henderson and Quinshawn Judkins. These two guys are going to be a problem for defenses. I'm interested to see if they are in the field, on in the backfield at the same time. 
I'm interested to see the schematics that Chip Kelly uses in order to try to run the football. All of that interests me a great deal. Then you get to the wide receiver core, and they are as deep a wide receiver core and as good of a wide receiver core as there, there is in college football. Emeka Buka is back. Carnell Tate is back. Uh, uh, Jalen Ballard is, is back. And then you've got what could be the best of them all, and Jeremiah Smith as a true freshman. And and they've got even other guys, Brandon Innes. Like they have got a ton of players that that are incredibly gifted on the outside. So whoever the quarterback is, just keep it on the rails. I don't think that they're going to need spectacular quarterback play in order to play elite level offense because of the level of what's going on at the skill positions. My biggest concern for them is actually not quarterback; it's actually offensive line. I do think that they could suffer some growing pains early with their offensive line. Um, That's why I'm interested to see what Chip Kelly does with the run game because he's been able to run the football with less than dominant offensive fronts basically his whole career. And so the schematics of how he does that, if he's able to do that and protect an offensive line and a quarterback with all the skill around them, in particular in the running uh, running back room, then then this offense is going to have a real shot. They have the luxury of, of having incredible depth, um, a number of veteran players, which I think is going to be important. And so to make a run, remember, you're going to have to play 16 or 17 games now with a new playoff. They've got the depth and the talent to go out there and, and potentially win a national championship. This is going to be a lot of pe- people's preseason number one or number two team. And, I, and, and I'm, certainly, I'm certainly in that mode. Uh, I think that they're a really great team. Now, about to head up to Ann Arbor this week, so I can't wait. So we will be running this back. So Michigan's spring game, live on Fox, noon Eastern on Saturday. They will be having a ring ceremony for the national championship team from a year ago. Coach, Coach Harbaugh is going to be there. A lot of those former players are going to be there. Ginny and I will talk to a lot of those uh, uh, players down on the field. Charles Woodson is going to join us on the broadcast. And we will be taking a look at what will be a very different Michigan team this next year, new head coach in Sharon Moore, even though he was an existing uh, promoted from within hire, they've got some new assistant coaches as well. Um, and they're going to have a new face at quarterback, just like the Buckeyes. OK, this this is not the veteran team that they were a year ago. And I can't wait to see what the identity is of the Michigan Wolverines and what they can do uh, in this uh, year after winning the national championship a year ago. Thank you for watching the Joel Class Show YouTube channel. And if you like this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.